Good evening and welcome to the News Roundup for Friday, April 21. I am Abigail Smythe. Before we get into the news, please remember to like this video, share our views in the comments, and share the video with your family and your friends. Teach them! Always make sure the message I reach them! Now for the news in detail. Dancehall artiste Laden is no longer behind bars. He was released from prison today after serving almost 31 months of his four-year sentence. In December 2020, Laden was sentenced to four years imprisonment for illegal possession of a firearm and 18 months for the illegal possession of ammunition. Both sentences ran concurrently. The Time to Shine artiste, whose real name is O'Keefe Aarons, had pleaded guilty to the charges. One of five men listed as Clarendon's most wanted has turned himself in. Jabulani Dwyer, otherwise called Jabu, surrendered to the Freeport Police in Montego Bay, St. James on Thursday. Dwyer of Woodhall District in Chapleton was listed as wanted for wounding with intent. The other four, who were named on Tuesday, are still being sought. The Jamaica Customs Agency is reporting the seizure of four handguns, seven magazines, and 900 rounds of ammunition at a warehouse in Montego Bay, St. James on Thursday. The agency says the discovery was made by personnel conducting routine operations. The contraband items were found in an import shipment. This is the third major gun seizure by Customs since the start of the year. The agency was recently lauded by the government for its efforts to disrupt the inflow of weapons from transnational criminal organizations. Two women have been implicated in the $222 million fraud racket committed at the Institute of Sports in sport. This brings to five the number of people arrested and charged for allegedly defrauding the entity. The lead investigating entity, the major organized crime and anti-corruption agency MOCA, revealed on Wednesday that three former employees had been arrested and charged in the multi-million dollar fraud case. The men, party promoter and Andrew Wright, Rudolph Barnes, and O'Neill Hope were picked up after a long-standing investigation by MOCA that spanned six years. MOCA says that the men have been part of a team that wrote, signed, and cashed fraudulent checks for payees who were neither employees nor contracted workers of the entity. Sometime before noon Thursday, MOCA carried out another operation that led to the arrest of the two women. Arrested and charged are Janique Mills and Andrea Picton. Both women have been charged with conspiracy to defraud. Mocha says Mills is also facing an additional charge of forgery. Mocha was called in to carry out a fraud investigation at InSport following an internal audit by the Institute in 2017. The period under probe was 2011 to 2017. The Supreme Court lifted an injunction against former director and shareholder of Stocks and Securities Limited, Hugh Crosscree, on Thursday. On January 25, the Financial Services Commission obtained an injunction against Mr. Crosscree, restraining him from dealing with any asset of the company pending a civil suit. The injunction order was also obtained against other directors, but Mr. Crosscree challenged the court order. His attorney argued in court that he was unaware of any fraudulent activities associated with SSL and at all times had acted in good faith. One of the attorneys representing Mr. Crosscree, Peter Champagny KC, said they were successful in arguing that the injunction was redundant since their client had resigned as a director of SSL. Supreme Court Judge Stephanie Jackson Hazley also ordered the Financial Services Commission to pay Mr. Crosscree's legal costs. Minister of Legal and Constitutional Affairs Marlene Malahu Ford is urging young Jamaicans to get enumerated to ensure their names are on the voters list in time for the upcoming referendum on whether the country should become a republic. The Constitutional Reform Committee is hoping to hold the referendum before the country's next general election, which is constitutionally due by September 2025. The vote would be only the second referendum in the country's 
history since the introduction of universal adult suffrage in 1944. The last referendum was held in 1961 and saw Jamaicans voting to leave the West Indies Federation. Meanwhile, the committee's youth representative, Sujay Boswell, is encouraging young people to participate in the ongoing process. He says whatever decision is made will affect future generations. In business, the Economic Commission for Latin America and the Caribbean is predicting that regional economies will grow by 1.2% this year as they face a complex external scenario marked by low growth in economic activity and global trade. In addition, the Commission said the interest rate hikes carried out globally were compounded by the financial turbulence seen in early March, which has increased uncertainty and volatility in financial markets. It warned that regional countries are facing limited space for fiscal and monetary policy once again in 2023. In a context of high demand for public spending, the Commission said measures will be needed to strengthen fiscal sustainability and expand fiscal space by strengthening the taxation policies revenue raising and redistribution capacity. On the foreign exchange market, the Canadian dollar's buying rate is $112.16, selling rate $115.42. Buying rate for the Great Britain pound is $188.95, while the selling rate is $191.45. The U.S. dollar's buying rate is $152.17, while the selling rate is $153.75. And in the region, the government of St. Kitts and Nevis has approved the full activation of its Cannabis Act on 420, the internationally recognized day of celebration of cannabis. By the Cannabis Act Day Order, published in the Gazette on Friday, the government has signaled its intent to clarify a responsible cannabis use and cannabis derivatives regulatory regime within the Federation. The Cannabis Act was passed in 2020. It sought to establish the Medicinal Cannabis Authority to provide for the lawful access to medicinal cannabis as an alternative treatment for persons who are suffering from a qualifying medical condition and for a comprehensive licensing scheme to regulate the cultivation, supply, possession, production and use of medicinal cannabis. With the new order, the Medical Cannabis Authority will have the legal authority to implement responsible regulation policies to kick start the medical cannabis industry in the Federation. And on the international scene, United Kingdom Deputy Prime Minister Dominic Raab grudgingly resigned on Friday after an independent investigation found he bullied civil servants. He has criticized the report as flawed. Rab's announcement came the day after Prime Minister Rishi Sunak received the findings of an investigation into eight formal complaints that Rab, who is also Justice Secretary, had been abusive towards staff members during a previous stint in that office while serving as Britain's Foreign Secretary and Brexit Secretary. Attorney Adam Tully, who conducted the inquiry, said Rab acted in a way which was intimidating and was unreasonably and persistently aggressive and introduced a punitive element to his leadership style. Rab denied claims, he belittled and demeaned his staff, and said he behaved professionally at all times. However, he said he was resigning because he had promised to do so if the bullying complaints were substantiated. And finally, in sports news, Dun Beholden FC and Portmore United completed the semi-finals of the Link Cup knockout. These were hard-fought wins over Tivoli Gardens and Molines United in Thursday's return leg of their quarter-final ties at the Anthony Spaulding Sports Complex in Kingston. Dun Beholden won 4-3 on sudden-death penalties after they overcame a first-leg deficit to beat Tivoli Gardens 2-0 after extra time, while while Portmore United won 4-3 on aggregate after Thursday's game ended in a two-all draw. They will meet Cavalier FC and Harborview in the semi-finals. And that's it for your news roundup for today and for this week. Please remember to like this video, share your views in the comments, and share the video with your family and your friends. I am Abigail Smythe. Have a good evening.
teach them. Hey, yo, hello. Send the message and make it reach them. It's teach them right here. Warlord representing. Thank you for watching. Like the video before you go. Please subscribe if you haven't done so. And remember to share the video with your friends and family. And browse the channel for more quality content. Until next time, walk good, my friends. Teach them!